Listing out existing data is great, but any real application is going to need to provide a way for users to add new data, and that's what we'll take a look at in this lecture. All right, so everything is in place for the user to filter properties based on a price range, but we're going to put in some controls now to add new properties in. We'll assume that the user has some kind of administrator level access and that they're able to add new properties into the application. So what we'll need is a form for the user to add new data in and a good spot to put it just for now is probably up in this green box here. So we've got two new buttons in place and these buttons are going to be responsible for showing or hiding the area to add listings. So like we saw in the previous lecture, we can have a button be responsible for toggling an area on and off if we set up an ng click and have a property on that click that negates itself. So again, this ng click on this button is going to set add listing, the property add listing, to whatever it isn't. So if add listing is true, then add listing becomes false when this button is clicked and vice versa. Similarly, we have the same thing going on here in the close button. And the reason that we haven't just used one button here and we've used two is because we want to have different text for the button depending on what the state of the input form is. And so here we're using a color of primary from Bootstrap on the add listing button and then a color of red from the button danger class and the word close when there's a close button that shows up. Now there are other ways that we could have set that up and maybe just used one button, but this is a good way to illustrate for now. Okay, so then we have another div down here with a class of listing form and you'll see I've used another of Angular's built-in directives called ngif. And ngif is quite similar to ngshow, but the difference is that ngif actually removes the entire DOM element that it's placed on whenever the condition that it has evaluates to false. And then it inserts that DOM element when that condition is true. And the condition in this case is that add listing should be true for this div to be placed in the DOM. Now you'll see here that I didn't say add listing should be equal to true, rather I just put add listing as the property. And that's another way of saying we want add listing to be true. We could explicitly put add listing should be equal to true here, but it's a bit redundant and we can save just a little bit of space by taking it out. So then within our add listing, we've got a number of input elements and you'll see for each of the input elements that we're using ng model to set new listing and then some property for that input element. And so in this case, this is the new listing address and here it's new listing price and so on. The other items in here are just standard for input elements and we're using bootstrap to put some styling on them as well. And then finally down at the bottom, you'll see here that we are putting the new listing property onto the screen and we're using the JSON filter to format it. So let's save that and take an initial look at what it's going to give us. Okay, so the add listing button is showing up and if we click it, we see we get all of our input elements showing, but the styling looks pretty off. So let's fix that now. The first thing that we'll do is add in some additional CSS. And I once again will paste this in and let you copy it out. And then we need to put a missing piece in just where our minimum and maximum price elements are. So if I come back up here, I can paste in another div and this one's got a class of row. And then we're also using ng if here to say that we want to show this if the add listing property is set to false. So much like how we said on the other ng if that add listing should be true just by stating add listing, we can negate it with the exclamation point to say that we want this div and everything within it to show up when add listing is false. Okay, so now we just need to put a closing div tag in and that goes here below this one. And then I'll just indent this in to make it look a bit better. Cool, let's check out what that looks like. All right, so we get everything showing up a bit better. And as you'll see, the minimum and maximum price select elements disappear once we have this add listing form open. So because we have all of our input elements bound to an ng model property, and in our case, you'll remember it's new listing, and then we've got whichever property that input element should have, we can get everything showing up down here in this JSON area. And you'll remember down here, we said we want to display the new listings with a filter of JSON. So let's test that out. So address one, two, three, 
any street and price can be hundred thousand dollars and property type house great house two three and then we'll say it's twelve hundred and so as you see here this json object is showing up formatted just how it would be in our data.json file and it's this new object that we create anytime we add input to our form that we're going to use to add new listings in and so to do that we have to set something up on the controller to handle that so back over here we're going to go to our controller and let's set up an initial empty object for our listing. So we're going to say scope new listing is equal to an empty object. So we want to set up a new function called add crib. So add crib is equal to a function and this should take a new listing. And we'll see in just a second how this comes through from the template. And so if we get a new listing, let's push it onto our cribs data. So we'll say scope cribs push the new listing okay so now let's use this function from the template so back over here in our template I'm going to just paste in a submit button and you can see here that we've got some of our standard class stuff but we've also got an ng click that says add crib with a new listing ng show is also put on here so that the button is shown when our add listing property is set to true and so ng click here again is pointing to that add crib function that we created over here within our controller and we are passing through new listing and new listing is pointing to new listing on ng model for each of the input elements so when we click this button add crib is going to be called and it's going to pass in all of the information on the new listing model so if we're back over here, we can refresh and we got add listing. So let's put in the info again. All right, so if we click add, we see we get our new listing down here and it's kind of put off to this side just because of the way that formatting is set up. And what we notice about it is that there's no picture and that's because we don't have it pointing to any particular picture right now. But if you'll remember in our images folder, we have a default crib image. And what we can do is point any new crib that doesn't have an image to that default image. And this is done because we aren't gonna see how to actually upload files to any kind of server in this tutorial. So back over here in our cribs controller, let's intercept things before we push onto the cribs data array. So we can say that the new listing image is equal to default crib. And so once again, that's the name of the image and we're going to pick up the rest of it, the .jpg in the template. And this is going to allow us to push a new listing on that has a default image attached to it. So back over here, if we refresh, we can try it again. And this time we'll just maybe put on a couple of the properties so that we don't have to spend too much time. We'll say add. And as you can see here, our listing is showing up and we get our default image in place. All right, so that works, but let's say we wanted to have new listings show up at the start of the series of listings and not at the end. For that, we can use another of Angular's built-in filters. We're going to use the order by filter this time. All right, so with filters, we can actually just keep chaining new filters on. So let's go over here and we'll say we want to use the order by filter. And then it takes an argument, which is the property on which it should filter the elements. And normally this would be some kind of relevant property like a date or something like that. But in our case, what we can just use is the ID of each of these properties. And in this case, let's say we want to order them by the reverse. So we'll say negative ID. Because we're using numbers, we can just put negative in front of ID and it'll order them in reverse order. So let's save that and check out what it looks like. All right, so immediately you'll see that we are getting everything showing up in reverse order. And if we go to add a new listing now, we can enter the address and we'll see that we get it showing up first. So that's how we can use the order by filter to change the order of how our elements show up. 
So one thing you might notice here is that whenever we add in a new listing, the data that we input doesn't go anywhere. And typically, whenever you fill in a form, you'd expect that information to disappear once your form submission has happened. And we can fix this by setting the property of new listing to an empty object after the form submission. So let's head back over to check out how to do that. Here within our cribs controller, we're gonna say that once this goes through, we want to set scope new listing to an empty object. So let's see if that works. We'll come back over and refresh, put in our details again. And after we add it, we see that everything has disappeared from the input elements, much like we'd expect. So that's it for this lecture. In the next one, we are going to see how we can edit listings and delete them.